What you guys got another video here for you. In this one, we're going to be looking at creating our own bootable uh, images or bootable DVDs or CDs with uh, Power ISO. Now, we'll be using Windows 8.1 for this. So, if you've been slipstreaming all your updates and making changes to your uh, image and you want to recreate a new disk or you want to create an image, then you can do it with Power ISO. You can also do a lot of other stuff with Power ISO. It's been out for a while. As you can see here, Power ISO. Uh, dot com is where you'll get it and uh, you can uh, create your own DVDs um, Blu-rays anything you can see here with this uh, tool. You can also uh, Create custom uh, ISO files and bin files and all that sort of stuff edit ISOs mount ISOs Loads and loads and loads of stuff you can do with this. Okay, it supports all these uh, formats as you can see here and loads of others and it is twenty nine ninety five uh, dollars uh, to buy so we're going to be concentrating on creating an image here or a disk depending on what you want to do and uh, we've got our windows 8.1 now however you go about getting your files now maybe you've been slipstreaming all this with all the latest updates this is what it would look like if you drag this off of a dvd uh, windows disk okay now you can do that by uh, putting your disk in and then dragging all the files onto that uh, folder onto the desktop and so you can work on that as well okay now if you don't know how to do all that sort of stuff you can watch my previous videos on how to uh, do all that sort of stuff like slipstreaming and stuff uh, but this is the actual windows uh, disk here okay i've got it on my desktop so we're going to open up our power iso now i've got my disk here as you can see this is all my windows stuff here and uh, what we're going to do here is I'm just going to quickly open up Power ISO and we can snap that to the right hand side here. Also open up our folder and we're going to snap this to the left hand side. Now there is all our files and all we need to do here really is grab all these files. Now you can use the add feature here if you wish. I'm just going to grab all these and drag them straight into here just like so. Now once we've done that we can uh, discard of that there I'm just going to make this a bit smaller so we can see what we're doing there we go so now we've got this uh, resized here as you can see down on the bottom left hand corner we've got a non bootable image and that's because we've taken it out of a disk and now it's not bootable so we need to create a bootable image from these files so whatever you've done to these files if you've slipstreamed all your updates in there or you've done other stuff to them and now you want to create your image this is how you're going to do it okay you're going to go up to actions boot and then add boot information and you'll see an area where it says file now we need to locate a file so we're going to go to our desktop where our windows 8.1 folder was go into here and uh, inside the boot area we need to come down to the bottom right hand corner now and show all files and this will show some other files we need to uh, click on this etf s boot click on that now once we do that we can open and this will give us the actual path as you can see here click OK and now we have a bootable image as you can see here pretty straightforward and easy to do so now we've got all our files back inside here and we've now got our bootable image now you've got a couple of things you can do here um, you can either save this as and you can see a DDA file or an ISO file standard ISO file and if I put this onto my desktop here you'll see uh, we can save this as an ISO so we'll just call this uh, say for instance uh, Windows and we'll do 8.1 or just 8-1 something like that and now that will start to create that file onto our desktop and there you can see we've now created our ISO image onto the desktop here and we'll take a look at that in a second so if you want to create a new DVD disc, and I say DVD because of the size of the file is 3.12 gigabytes. Now that's not going to fit onto a standard CD disc, which is only 700 megabytes. You'd need to have a DVD disc, and then you would burn this to a DVD disc. All these files, now you can either use your image to burn to, from, or you can use the files inside here. It doesn't really matter because they're both bootable now. We've created that you just click on the burn now burning is actually burning these files in onto a disk so you could then use that disk to uh, boot to and uh, install windows 
and you can list your drive here select the drive which you're using your cd-rom drive and then pretty much uh, i would use a lower speed uh, just because you don't want to uh, push it too much and cause failure so anything like that will do eight times and let it run it will take a bit of time you can verify if you wish if you feel confident that uh, it's burnt correctly that's what i would do and then select that and then click on burn and you're pretty much good to go okay now if you do burn this at full speed i've had it i have had success at burning at full speed but sometimes things can go wrong uh, when you're burning too fast okay and you're trying to do a complex uh, image like this so it's up to you which way you go about it now you can use your current uh, compilation which is what we've got in here or we're going to be using the image that we just created now if we wanted to look at this image here I'm going to open this up with power ISO as you can see here and now I've opened this up now and as the power ISO icon will now show because it's um, recommended we use that program and if you come down here you will see now that ISO that we've just created is a bootable image and that's how you can create a bootable ISO or a bootable DVD using power ISO I hope you enjoyed it guys my name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk if you enjoy these videos and you find it useful uh, then hit that like button and also hit the subscribe button and that will notify you when I upload new videos. If you've got any problems with computers or any questions or any video requests or any software that you want me to do a review on, then you can go over to my forums. The information is on the screen right now and be join, uh, join that forum. It doesn't cost anything and uh, become part of the community and, uh, and pretty much you get your PC fixed for free. Anyway, I'm starting to waffle on so I'm going to wrap this video up and I shall see you again in the next video. Bye for now.